So I just wanted to speak very, very briefly about my own journey. But this is the second um, event, the International Women's Day event that I've attended so far. And I think I have maybe have about four or five others throughout the course of the week. So women are confident and coming forward and taking forward in so many platforms. And it's just powerful to see. At the weekend, I was at an event in Dublin. And it was three panels. And for any of you that go to events, when you see three panels, you're like, oh, no, really? But it was absolutely fascinating because it was women from every walk of life. It was women representing, you know, migrant, refugee community. It was women uh, from the sports background, from media, from the women's sector, childcare, you name it, they were on that platform. And it was hugely empowering because I always think International Women's Day is, well, for me, certainly, it's a time to reflect on how far we've come, but it's also a celebration of our achievement. It's also an acknowledgement of the challenges that we face, but it's also a reminder that there is many, many of us, there's millions of us globally, and I think that inspires us all to work together to make things better and improve uh, lives for women across you know, every aspect of life. So I think that's the, the thing that I always take away from International Women's Day. But I'm going to steal off one of the ladies that spoke on um, Dublin, or in Dublin on Saturday, um, a clip that she took from the Good Housekeeping Guide in 1955. And I don't know if any of you have heard this before. Um, but if she was reflecting just on how much society has changed from then till now. So this was a housekeeping guide that was, um, you know, how to be a good wife, how to treat your partner well. And it set out a number of things that you should do. And I'm only going to read you a couple of them just for a wee bit of a joke. But it wasn't a joke, it was actually a reality of life then. So this magazine published an article that said, have his dinner ready. Have his dinner ready, plan ahead the night before to make sure you have a delicious meal ready whenever he comes home. It says, most men are hungry when they come home, and the prospect of a good meal, especially his favourite dish, will make a warm welcome after his hard day. <laughs> this, this one really takes a biscuit. Prepare yourself. Take 15 minutes to rest so you'll be refreshed whenever he arrives. <laughs> Touch up your makeup. Put a ribbon in your hair and be fresh looking. Like, seriously. <laughs> But that was the reality of life in 1955 and I think we all can say that we've come a very long journey from then to where we are um, today. So I just, I just wanted to offer that up was this, and I actually told the lady at the time that I, that I was actually going to uh, use it today at um, our event. Um, I just wanted to say um, very briefly just about my own journey because my journey is a political journey um, and I've been an activist since I was a teenager. Um, we're all activists, we're all activists in, in different ways. We're all of activists because we want to make a difference. And whenever I, I think about speaking at something like this and I think about my own journey, so I was an activist when I was a teenager and I was a mother when I was a teenager. I was a mother when I was 16. So all of my elected life, I've had a young family. Um, and that's challenging, as you all know, and plenty of the women in the room today and the men have, have families and it's, it's a a challenge always to try and juggle everything that you want um, to do. So I've, uh, I suppose, at 16 years of age, single mother, there's always a stigma, there's always you know, that bias that comes with that. But I wasn't prepared to accept that. I wanted to change things. I didn't think that was good enough and I wasn't going to allow anybody to um, pigeonhole me. So I got active in politics um, because I wanted to make a difference in my community, to be honest, because I could see injustice all around me and I, I knew I could do something about it. Um, I got active because I was a Republican and I wanted to be involved in, in Sinn Féin and I became a person who doesn't do things by half, so I'm an all-in kind of girl. So from uh, being an activist uh, in my community to being elected for the first time in 2005 to Dungannon Council and like there was very, very few women, even fewer than, uh, obviously fewer than there is today. but. Whenever I went into that council chamber, I was struck, and I didn't even think of this before I went in, that, that how little uh, women were in the chamber. And then I went on to become the first female deputy first mayor, the first female mayor in 2010. And again, when I was thinking about that today, I was elected to here in 2007, so it was a time whenever you double jobbed. So I was double job when I was a councillor, I was an MLA, I was vice chair of the health committee, I was the mayor of the council. Imagine even juggling all of that alongside just living, being a, you know, a mother and a daughter and a sister and everything else that, that comes with life. So um, I've always found, uh, well, my, my own journey 
I think by and large it's been challenging at times for sure but it's always been a worthwhile journey because I believe in what I do, I enjoy what I do, I like looking after people, I like standing up for people, I like calling out injustice whenever I see it and I, most importantly I like to be able to do something about it. So my political journey has been from those early days going into the council, as I said, through the mayors and deputy mayors um, coming in here to be an MLA. On each stage I was daunted. At each stage I felt um, like nearly a fraud in my own shoes. At each stage you always doubt yourself because that's what women do. Um, but I kept on going. I actually am very, very lucky to have had great uh, mentors. Like Mark McGuinness was, was, uh, was definitely my mentor. And Martin always pushed you and he always pushed me into things that I wasn't comfortable to do. But he would have pushed you because he knew that you'll sink or swim and he always knew that I would swim. So um, I always be grateful for that because I think we all need that wee nudge. It's just the nature of women to second guess yourself. So um, I came in here and elected for a number of years as an assembly member and then I've held agriculture and I've had health and then obviously in 2020 whenever the assembly was restored being um, the deputy first minister. So that's been a huge journey and I can tell you standing in front of you here today I can still remember my first speech as deputy mayor in the council and I am not even joking you when I say I didn't deliver my speech like this. I couldn't, I couldn't hardly hold the page, it was so nerve wracking. But again, that's why we all have to be kind to ourselves, and that was making the point earlier. Every day, whenever you, you're, you're mean to yourself, you probably talk about this, you have to also say, what good did I do today? And be positive about our contributions. So I only give you all of that to say, we all come on a journey, and there'll be ups and downs in the journey, um, but we have to believe in ourselves first and foremost. Because if we don't believe in ourselves, nobody else will. So, happy International Women's Day. Up the women, and I can't wait to hear from the panel.